I don't know what my area code is because I'm up in the Milky Way for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi everyone. Tom Servo here on the yep. Satellite of Love and this is my pal Crow. Yeah, and that uh, goofy looking guy back there, that's Mike Nelson. He's trying to call his grandma on the phone. It's a sweet <laughs> gesture, isn't it? But we explained to him it's not that easy to do when you're stranded in space. Yeah, well, you guys are never armed with a stack of calling cards and a few little tricks like I am. Wow. Oh, hello. Oh, I can see that. Hey, get around here. This is it. What? You're kidding. You actually got your grandma on the this phone? This is my grandma. Huh. Well, grandma's a mall walker. She's probably just getting in right now. Right. Gotcha. Hello. Hello. Grandma, this is Mike. I'm stranded in space. You gotta help. You gotta get someone to help me down. What? What's up? Speak I, up. I say I've been shanghaied on a satellite. You gotta get someone to help me get out of here. I'm just kidding. This is Catherine, and I'm not in right now. Oh. I might be sitting for Tommy's kids, or else I'm at Linda's. Leave a message. Grandma, listen very carefully. This is Mike. I've been str <laughs> That was my only chance. Wow, that's harsh, huh? That's mm. okay, Mike. Yeah. We're your family now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sprint. Oh, no, Mike, 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 Mike. Oh, oh. Uh, you should really make a note of that that you got a machine so that if the bill comes and we're erroneously charged for the call, then you have a paperwork to back up your claim that you were charged for the call in error so that you won't have to pay for that call, Mike. Huh. Uh, Crow, hmm? you lived during the Great Depression, didn't you? Oh, uh, Backrack and David are calling. They are? Just push the button. <laughs> laundry and laundry. Oh, Mike, you would not believe the day I've had. I don't know how single parents do it. Oh, I was excited with the arrival of young Frank. Dr. Uh, F, come on! Clayton's on the phone right now, Frank. It's a 25-hour-a-day job keeping track of Frank. He's into everything. Sometimes I think we both need a little break. That's why I've invented the Frank Enforcer. You see, the Frank Enforcer keeps little Frank suspended in that disorienting no-man's land between floor and ceiling. <laughs> the mat with the nails jutting out at a most dangerous angle gently discourages Frank from jumping out of the Frank Enforcer and into Dr. F's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little minute, Frankie. Oh, there you go. Now Dr. Forrester has time to tabulate and standardize results of our latest experiment, postulate new theories, or just get the laundry done without worrying about this one. <laughs> Plus, I've gotten to know someone very special, me. <laughs> oh, I gotta go, Mike. Uh, we get fussy if we've been in there more than a few weeks. Immature little baby. I'm guessing Frank's in the 90th percentile. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let me set the scene here. You're at your favorite candlelit restaurant, spending time with someone very special, exchanging lingering glances over the fettuccine. What? Laughing low, throaty laughs over a shared private joke, fingers entwined. Would you just get on with it, Servo? Uh, and sometimes you just need your server's attention. Me, Enter the waiter baiter. Excuse me, pardon me. If I could just... Uh, uh, I'll be right over pardon here. Uh, just, uh, hi, Tad. Don't pardon waste your valuable just, uh, time trying to get your waitron's me, attention. Just let the waiter baiter do the dirty just, work. Uh, I'll be with you in a moment, just, please. Uh, I'm in the weeds so here. Are we gonna here? Oh, I think I get the haggis. Let's fix that, why don't we? Okay, well, what, I just, uh, what do you, excuse me. What do you think, sir? I, uh, I think you'll be having our special, a tough, <laughs> stringy entree called Teenage Strangler. <laughs> Frank, served with a distasteful little appetizer about love or some such slop. Frank! I think I'm going to have to put Frank down for a nap, permanently. <laughs> Frank! 
No, no, you had three big bites of my lettuce wedge. Yeah, but you had my cling peach, so well, it I only had out. a little taste of your cling peach. You, you don't expect me to. Half. I'm not going to pay for your cling peach. Well, I'm not going to have to pay for it. Ladies, ladies, we have movie side. Oh my God, movie side. would just get together and pay the tab. Is this love or is it just rough sex with Michael Douglas? Wow. Wow. <laughs> By Paul H. Landis, who has never known the touch of a woman. Collaborator, Lillian Bilkey, who's single and lives in a furnished room with six cats. <laughs> Lillian Bilkey. 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 Well, except for Tom Hanks and Peter Scolari. Naturally. <laughs> Out of my way, I want to catch the end of Bobby Hackett's trumpet solo. Miss <laughs> Channing, there's an Eve Harrington here to see you. Looks like Van Gogh's room in Arl. Oh, Arl. So, um, where's Waldo? Uh, he's under the bed. Oh, cool. Jeez, how many times was she held back? <laughs> Hi, Peg. Hi, Mom. Well, you look more excited than I've ever seen you before, and that's saying something. Yes. Oh, oh Liz, you'll never guess. I got engaged to Joe. We're going to be married at the end of the semester, right after Joe graduates. What? You won't even go steady with him for a couple of months. Oh, exactly three months and three days. Love has made me but, anal. <laughs> but, Peg. Are you going to drop out of college before you graduate? I mean, you've only got another year to go. Oh, Liz, everyone isn't as slow as you and Andy. Besides, you're a Romulan. I want to get married in June. Hmm, get the cuffs. Joe's been told he has a good chance of getting a job on a pro football team this summer. As a water boy? Sure, we'll make out. Are you going to phone your mom and dad about getting engaged? Actually, they're married already. Oh, oh I see. I'm scared stiff of what Mother will say. Sure. We'll raise the roof. I think I'll send a telegram instead. Don't be silly, Peg. You always talk as though your mother was an ogre or something. Well, I've known her for 50 Dad years. Dad too much. And mother will be furious. Every so often she writes to ask if I've seen Pete Standish. You know, just because his father's a big-time real estate man and he's mother's idea of a perfect catch. He just got the Glen Gary account. Compared to Joe, Pete's so dull. Joe's so handsome. Handsome <laughs> equals not dog. Honestly, Peg, I don't know how many times ever since we were in high school together I've heard you go on the same way about some man or other. Oh, but this is different, Liz. Really, it is. He's anatomically correct in everything. It's the real thing. I remember when I first felt that way about Andy. At the turn of the century. I think about him all the time. Gosh, Peg, you, you just can't rush into marriage. Why not? Julia Roberts did. Mm. Liz. Don't mind my saying this, but... Uh -oh. You and Andy seem so... So, so old-fashioned, I suppose you mean. No, just old. <laughs> well, you've been going together for a year and a half. Last month, you finally became engaged. I'm just not like that. I'm easy. <laughs> well, that's fine, but... Are you sure you'll always be in love like you are now? With somebody, okay, sure. Liz. Liz, how can you say such a thing? Oh, wait a minute, Peg. Come here. Please don't get upset. All I mean is, are you sure you see eye to eye about things like... The trade deficit. Well, like money and, and children. Bogus. Or, or even what's right and what's wrong. How do you get along with each other's families? Boring. Suppose your parents won't approve. Hmm. You have to think about these things, Peg. Look, can we get separate beds? As far as I'm concerned, you don't have to think that you sound the right man. I excuse me, but that's my boyfriend? You better go and send that telegram. I'm too much in love to send a telegram. Hmm. Oh, I love his picture. Maybe someday I'll meet him in person. No. Uh, let's see. If my yeah, if my uh, if my demands are not met, the screams of those who've wronged me and the smell of burning flesh will fill the student uh, the student union. Andy, how's the essay coming? Not so good, Mom. Page two. Mm, not so good. Will you just lay off? Oh, I, I can do an engineering paper in two days, Liz. <laughs> but I've been working on this English assignment for a week, and nothing. Gosh, Andy, you've got to get your English or you won't graduate. Would you just leave me alone? Yeah, Look, 
Why don't we meet at the library tonight? Oh, yeah. Maybe I can help. Yeah. Gee, thanks, sir. That'd be swell. Conformist without a cause. Mm. Hey, look. The lovebirds have arrived. And they're leaving their droppings all over the place. <laughs> Nothing like advertising. They got engaged last night. <gasps> Peggy says they're getting married right after commencement. Marriage? It's immoral. Boy. Peggy thinks it's all hand-holding and gazing into each other's eyes. She doesn't know about the stench of ammonia from the piles of crap-filled diapers and... We were like that once, too. And now, a firm and hearty hand clasp. first dates were exciting. The more I got to know you, the more I liked what I knew. Though I suppose I was really intrigued by the things I didn't know about you. Like you're being a communist and all. We seemed to have lots in common, didn't we? There were so many things we could do together. What the hell was that for? Well, you were supposed to cover down the line, I told you! Come here, look I at that. I wish I could argue with you there. But you've emasculated me. You really enjoy a good argument, don't you? I haven't forgotten the time the Dean's rule on drinking came out. I can quit any time I want and to. That was the day I found out we could argue like anything and somehow love each other more. I thought expulsion was too stiff a penalty. One small slip and some guy's whole life could be changed. Drinking in college? I've never There's heard of that. There's a lot to what you said then, Andy, but I couldn't entirely agree. Expelling somebody is a serious thing, of course, but... So is drinking in a dorm. All those people living so close together. Look, would you just lay off for 10 seconds? Well, we didn't settle the issue, but it sure was fun trying. <laughs> I wanted to convince you, and you tried to convince me. <laughs> Though I guess we became most convinced about each other. We must have. Up until a month ago, that finger looked kind of bare. Remember? Mm. Naked. Mm. But that zirconia, you jerk. QVC, thank you. Uh, I figured if, like, we split it, the cost, we can afford it. Gifts given into arms, punished by expulsion. Death. Kiss me. Mmm, it tastes like Gene Kirkpatrick. Oh, I'm on fire. Enough. That's enough. Honey, I also got you a subscription to Modern Maturity. Hmm. Gosh, I think our folks were even more excited than we were. Yeah, when your dad got the shotgun down. You ready to go back to the dorm? Hi. Oh, yeah. Hi, Andy. Hey, congratulations, you two. I just heard the news. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Andy. <laughs> have you found a place to live around here? Mm. Oh, I don't think you have to worry about anything. You just find a little apartment somewhere. Peggy! It's the heat, Mother, run! Dad. Hi, darling. Oh, poopy. What are you doing here? <laughs> we got your telegram. Aren't you thrilled? Should we be? Now, don't be cross, Betty. Let's hear Peggy's side. Well, he's good in the sack, and he likes to get high. <gasps> well. well, we've been going steady for over three months now. And Mother, Dad, we have such wonderful times oh my together. my God. I'm in love, really in love for the first time. We plan to marry right after commencement. It's as simple as that. You're grounded. Peggy wrote us last week that Joe was going into professional football. Has he signed on with any team yet? Well, no, he hasn't got a contract yet. <laughs> but he's been told he has a Loser. very good chance of getting one. Mm -hmm. After all, he's been the star of our team here this year, you know. Yeah. Peg, your mother and I have come down here to ask you to put off your wedding. And to kill Joe. Until at least after you've graduated. Now, dear, if you'll wait, we can help you get a house and you can set up a home properly. Oh, take the house. Take the house. Oh, yeah. house. Oh, Dan, I love Joe. Kill us. Please we kill us. We can live in a little apartment wherever we're situated. Being with Joe means more to me than anything else. We won't wait. But, dear, you only have one year and a month more to go. It'd be such a pity not to finish here. Captain and Spaulding. while you're finishing your last year, Joe can get established in football if that's what he really wants. And you'll have some more time to see if you're right for each other. That theoretical stuff gives me a pain. We're sure now we're right for each other. And that's all that's really important. But, Peggy, we want to meet Joe. Oh, look. Don't dare. Why don't we all have dinner together at the hotel tonight? And then he can tell us all about his football business. Football is Joe's profession, Mother, and it's just as good as anything else. Get a rope, honey. Joe and I had already made plans for a date tonight, and I see no reason to change them now. But, Peggy, dear... You're not going to stop us marrying. Dad thinks all he has to do is pay for something, and he'll get his own way. Work till you now. By treating me like a child, you can force me to do what you want. Wow. Well, you're both wrong. I'm no child. I'm me, and I'll do what I want. Well, honey, looks like we spawned a demon seed. Don't worry, Betty. She'll get over it. Just a touch of hysterics, that's all. 
Why, by the time the end of the semester comes, she'll probably be madly in love with someone else. Come on, we'll see her again in the morning. Let's hit the bar. It's happy hour. Young Colonel Sanders. He's no football player. He might be in the swing choir. Oh, Joe, I'm so mixed up about everything. Original or extra crispy? Folks trying to stop us. They've always tried to run my life. I want you to run my life. Like when I wanted to go to a dance at a roadhouse. Hmm? Dad insisted that I stay at home. Just because Patrick Swayze was there. I was so mad, I climbed out of a window and went to a girlfriend's house. That's kind of odd, honey. And the folks were frantic. They looked all over for me. They even called the police. Finally found me at that crack house. <laughs> what a girl. <laughs> I had so many brothers and sisters, nobody would miss me if I'd left. Well, who cares about you? It would take a couple of days for anyone to realize I'd gone. Well, believe me, being an only child has its disadvantages. <coughs> hey, move it up there! Uh, Every Astro. move I've ever made. Being in college has been sheer heaven. Except for the classes. Oh, Joe, we've got to do something. They'll do anything to break us up. I wish I hadn't sent that telegram. I just hadn't made me. Look, honey. I should tell you, I'm a woman. I love you. I want to marry you. But what is this crap? I love you too, Joe. I don't ever want to be away from you. We have a winner. Ooh. Luminary returns indicate love. He's at the 40, the 50. He might go all the way. Oh, you taste like Troy Donahue. You taste like Eleanor Donahue. Oh, I'm spent. That was incredible. We'll work something out. Watch out for snakes. Meanwhile, back in the cold, bitter, loveless life of her parents. Well, good morning, Liz. Good morning, Mr. Kramer. Good morning, Mrs. Kramer. Good morning, Liz. We inquired at the desk for Peggy, but they said she wasn't in, so we asked for you. We knew you'd be in. I don't really know, Mr. Kramer. She left the room very early this morning before I was awake. For some reason, she took her teddy. She oh. left this note for me. Let's see here. Dear Dad, lose the mustache, you twisted old fruit. Dear Liz, I'm afraid Mother and Dad would try to stop us. So Joe and I left this morning to be married. Oh, Mr. Drysdale. Please break the news to the folks. Try to explain that this is something I had to do. I'm afraid they won't understand. Love, Peggy. Here, look at it. Look at it! I'm sorry, Mrs. Kramer. Mm, got the boogers again, eh, dear? Couldn't she have told us how she really felt? She only mentioned this boy twice in look, letters. Look, I'm the roommate. Lay off. I just thought it was another college crush. How could she do it? Well, How see, the man lies him? next to the woman at oh. Even getting married at the end of the semester would have been better than eloping. Poor darling. Ah, let's make sweet love and have Some a new daughter. She, she may have so much to regret. Well, she could end up like us. Sorry, I can't be your daughter. I already have parents. Bye-bye. Uh, Jeez, I don't blame Peggy. What a couple of wing nuts. All right, let's go talk about our superior relationship. Liz again. and Andy, are they really in love? Can love transcend going to gender? Get it for a year and a half now. Is Peggy right in thinking that Andy and Liz are too old fashioned? Is this going to be on the what test? About Peggy and Joe. They appear to be in love. They're not. They obviously are physically attracted to one another. Whoa. Right now, they're radiant with excitement and the thrill of taking matters into their own hands. <laughs> yes, yes. When this excitement of the moment settles down, what will remain? A big visa bill. Will they be companions as well as lovers, willing and able to share the realities and responsibilities of having a home, bringing up children, and making a living? Hey, you're bringing me down, man. There's really no one and only for any of us until we make it so by our own choice. And when we do choose, we have to know, will this love stand the test of time? You make the call. How would you answer this question for Liz and Andy, Peggy and Joe? Bob and Carol, and How Ted and Alice. Tell? Is this love? You have 10 minutes to answer the questions starting now. Ding. And now stay tuned for the Clarence Thomas and Anita Hill hearings. No animals were hurt during the filming of this movie. How much affection? When should I marry? Know your ointments. What's that down there? When he wants it rough. Procreation, not recreation. Oh no, pleasure. McClintock.
Then shall I turn my face and hear one bird sing terribly afar in the lost lands. Now that, my little friends, is love. Oh. Not since Edgar Allan Poe's love for the comely Helen chronicled so eloquently have I been so moved, so taken, so bored. Hey, come on, Crow. That's one of my all-time favorite poems. It's so complete in its beauty. Let me read you some more stuff. Ah, uh, that ain't love. How can it be? It's unrequited. Plus, it's got all that longing and yearning junk. I want to hear about hot love, quick and ready. You know, see it, like it. Got it. <laughs> oh, like Rod Stewart sees Rachel Hunter on TV, writes her a letter, and then boom, they're married. Yeah, uh, you think that's love? No, it is for me. Have you mm -hmm. seen that video? Wow. <laughs> I'm serious. Do you think it's love? Or how about Edie Gourmet and Steve Lawrence? Is that love true? Well, it's love, but it's not love on the scale of Glenn Campbell and Tanya Tucker. Oh, no. Well, how about Emilio and Paula? Is she forever his girl, or is he a cold-hearted snake? Oh, Crow, she's so cute, and he's just as nice as the Dickens. I'm sure it can survive. Well, just look at Don and Melanie. Hey, no problems there, huh? Mm, true. Yeah. Or how about Bruce and Demi? Yeah. Joanne and Paul? Yeah. Oh, and uh, Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love. Now they've built their house on high and solid ground. Mm -hmm. And there's the classic Edie Adams and Ernie Kovacs. Maria Shriver and Arnold. Uh, Jack Douglas and Rico. Hey, John and Yoko, for that matter. Joan Didion and John Gregory Dunn? Yeah. Oh, get with it. That Nelson, showbiz love is the only love that matters. Oh, it is, huh? Okay, well then, how about Bert and Lonnie? Hmm? <gasps> oh, no! Oh. I can't believe it, please. It's so sad. Oh, who would have guessed? Oh, and their little boy. <laughs> and what'll become of the dinner theater? <laughs> oh, good one, Nelson. It's like walking on eggshells with this one. <gasps> eggshells? No, uh, Lonnie. <laughs> Hey, old Ducci's jamming with Ramsey Lewis. I'm getting more afraid every time I come to meet you here. Uh, who's ever gonna find us here at school? And anyway, where else can we go at night to be alone? Don't worry. I am worried, Jimmy. I'm afraid of something. I don't know what it is. But... Afraid of who? Richard Speck on a date. The folks will never know as long as they think you're with Anne. What does Anne do this? Ooh. Ooh. Forbidden love is the best. Damn him. Damn him. You hear the ocean roar in this film. You almost done with my boyfriend? Come on. More tongue. Late. I've got to go home. Mel, kiss my grits. Hey, will you? Okay, I'm okay. I'll be right there. Let's go. No more to I'll see you here Saturday night. Go on. Get. I'm sorry. I'm the... Mr. Wilson, what are you doing here? It's so late. I might ask you the same question, young lady. Let me check my line here. Could be out this time of night. Is it time of night? Or any time at night when the school is closed. Look, I'll walk you home. Uh, wait right here. I'll be right back in a minute. I get my hat and coat and turn off some lights. I'll be right back. Oh, no. No, you don't have to bother. Please don't. No, no bother at all. I'm finished. Uh, you stay put right here and... I'll walk you home. He asked me. He asked me. Oh. Come on, let's go with that. No, wait. Maybe we ought to do as he says. He is the janitor. You think he mm. knows about me and Jimmy? Oh, what's the difference? It's too late now. Come on. Well, they're going to go neck in the alley. <laughs> Another busy Friday night in downtown St. Paul. <laughs> yeah. Several hours later. My diaphragm hurts. I'm beginning to wish we'd waited for Mr. Wilson. But we're here, I can't believe. Well, we did. And now we're stuck in Lake Forest. Let's go this way. Okay. I'll live the other way, but all right. Angels, hard as they come. I can't stop. Come on, Anne. We've got to go. Oh, Betty, I can't. I feel very much for this Paul. I've got to rest. Got to rest? Hey, hmm? did you hear something? Sounds like Ruth Underwood. Hmm. No. I didn't hear anything. I hate you. <laughs> Look, I'm going. Come on. Look, rhubarb. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, I've had better dates. 
Splendor in the grass, too. Dream Warrior. Hey, would you keep it down? I'm trying to strangle someone here. Happy Le Pew over there. <laughs> With action hips. Now, is this a teenager who strangles or a person who strangles teenagers? Good question. Well, let's watch on. Oh, anytime Vi does a production, it turns out so well. Oh, yeah. She uses those jerky canned onions oh. and all. American Diversified is produced by a food service. Jeez, look at that. Even dead, she looks great. She can wear anything. Oh, I hate her. I think the dog did it, Ed. When did you find the body? We got a call about half an hour ago, Lieutenant. But then she was there and I uh, investigated. I'm a guy. Looks like she got it just like the rest. Hmm. Yes, let's see. It's the same M.O. He means modus operandi. Around her neck. Lipstick mark on her forehead. Yep. He's a humorous killer, isn't he? Yeah. What kind of a nut would do something like this? We're still trying to find that out. Frank. Three weeks ago was a 17-year-old girl in Canova. Last week, a student teacher at the school. Not much older than this kid. Let's review the case in front of everybody. We're taken now, Lieutenant. <laughs> it's not funny. Okay, Doc. You can take off now. No, wait, let me gate batter some more here. You ready? <sighs> <sighs> Time. Hey, move that keg out of the way, will you? Uh, there, there, thanks. Yeah, yeah, she'll fit. I'll make her fit. There, always room. See? Oh. Well, those ambulance guys seem real nice. Hm. Uh, pump it! There we go. Yeah, we always talk about having lunch, but just never get around to it. I need a snicker bar. Courtesy boy on three, please. Lieutenant Anderson to headquarters. Anderson, that's me. Go ahead, Lieutenant. We've finished here. They've taken the body to the morgue. The guy's in the back seat. Captain Murdoch wants to know if you've got any new clues. <laughs> no, nothing more than before. And don't rush me. I figure it's the same one. Tell Captain Murdoch I'll be in as soon as I have finished around here. Oh, and you, uh, you better have a couple of the boys uh, down here to help Bill. Are you 10-4? 10-4. Okay. 10-4, <laughs> that's official cop talk, you know. Mm. Now, you'll have some help. I want you to comb this whole area. Check but, out everything. Streets, houses, everything in sight. But Captain, I've got some things to attend to at the morgue. But I'm a milkman. Well, I guess I could leave him some yogurt. Well, I'll get to it tomorrow. What could possibly happen between now and then? Who cares? 6.10. I return to the Best Western. <laughs> Mamie Eisenhower. No, yes, we don't know who what it was. Betty made no sense until this morning. Yes, I explained, Golf. Yes, we called the police. Yes, he's dead, dead, dead. As a matter of fact, we're expecting them at any moment. 611, they were expecting us at any moment. I rang the bell. The doorbell's ringing. That must be them now. I've got to hang up. Yes? Okay, I'll join the ACLU. Yes. I'll call you From later. community theater to the big screen. <laughs> well, now remember the three S's. Smile, star, strong. <laughs> oh. I'm Lieutenant Anderson, Homicide Division. Drop the poodle oh. and step away from the condo, please. Only one of you? Earl Wilson. Hmm. I'm Betty's mother, Mrs. Royston. We've been expecting you. They phoned you'd come. Let's go into the living room. My husband's in there. <laughs> You're quite handsome. Can I touch your gun? Do we start with stern questioning? When do you become physical with me? Dear, this is Lieutenant Anderson. Anderson, Thank that's me. How do you do, Lieutenant? Now, I knew a policeman once back in my hometown. Didn't like him. His name was Hurtison also. The name I have is Anderson. That's me. Mr. Royston, I'm here on police business. Sit down, won't you? <laughs> Terrible thing last night. We could hardly understand that at all. It's the chair, sir. Mr. Royston. I'd like to talk to your daughter. Hey, now, take a number, pal. You had a rough time last night. I don't think she's up yet. Listen, she's lucky she can wake up. Would you get Betty, please? I'd like to ask her some questions. Of course, Lieutenant. I'll get her right away. God, I would trade places with you. Well, anyway. Do you have any idea who it might be, Lieutenant? How about some coffee? No, thank you. I'll pass this time. From what you informed us last night, your daughter didn't get a positive identification. Well, that's what she said. What time did your daughter get home last night? Well, I really don't know for sure. 
You see, my wife and I were out at the time. Mm. I see. Enough said. Yes, we were at the Frederick. Uh -huh. A business meeting, you know. Yeah. Well, the first call came in around 2 a.m. Is that right? Well, that's when we came home. Hmm. I believe it was you who called here later. Yes, hmm. sir, that was around 3 a.m. Quite a night between calls. Huh. I had to stay home today for my business. I had diarrhea. It's frightening to think a thing like this could almost happen to your daughter. Hmm. It happened to someone's daughter, Mr. Royson. Hmm. Someone's daughter who was out with your daughter until all hours of the night. Now, see here, Lieutenant. Stick it where the sun don't... My daughter, she has to be in by 10 p.m. We can't watch over her like an old mother hen. Bok bok. Why pick on my innocent little girl who was almost killed last night herself? Nobody's picking on your daughter, Mr. Royson, but you and every other parent in town have known about these attacks, and it's your responsibility to watch out after your kids. Oof. And your responsibility, too. Mm. You're getting paid for it, Lieutenant. That's your job as a cop. And what's your job as a parent? Are you as turned on as I am? getting on real well. Shut up! Uh, Betty will be down in just a moment, Lieutenant. Can I get you a cup of coffee or something? No, thank you. May I show you my slip? Here, did you tell the Michelsons we won't be over this evening? This has been quite a shock to both of us, Lieutenant. We really do feel as though we should stay home with Betty tonight. That is right, isn't it, Lieutenant? Easy now. Almost there. They're only stairs. But, oh, no, more Hi, stairs! Sit down here. Uh, pardon the stain. I'm a cop. I'd like you to tell me everything you can about last night. Yes, sir. I understand. I kissed my boyfriend it's and the girl a... died. It was so horrible. I didn't know they were there. Please, Mrs. Royce, mm. let me handle this. Betty, I want you to tell us everything you can. In the first place, why did you come in so late? Are you now, or have I... you ever been a communist? I was with Jimmy last night. Jimmy! Mm. How many times have I told you I don't want you running around without wild kids? Jimmy is not wild! Mr. Royson, let me do the talking. Yes, Lieutenant. Jag off. What was that? Please, Mrs. Royson, I'd like to talk to Betty. Please clear the shot. Looks like Mom has won some dirt track trophies. <laughs> Betty, where were you last night? I waited for you for hours. Jimmy and I drove around a bit. I'd planned to meet down at the school. We were going to tell our folks that we'd been working at the library. Oh, this is hot. It... Hot. <laughs> Anne and I met at the school about 12.30, 1 o'clock. Betty, we're dealing with a thrill killer, a madman. If you, if you can remember anything. Right, punch it up a little. Sell me this madman. Lieutenant. Yes? Yes. Yes, go on. More. It, it couldn't have been one of the kids. They're all good Lutherans. Oh, yeah. It couldn't have. Could it? I don't know. Whoever it is is familiar with the area. Probably knows what most of you do. It's just that... Oh, it couldn't have been one of the kids. Okay, fine. It couldn't have been one of the that, kids. Well, the gang, the fastbacks. The hot rodders. The fast bunch he goes out with. Yes, sir. What about them? I remember hearing Ann scream. It went, ah. And I was walking just a bit ahead. What then, Betty? She was looking at my butt. The club has these white emblems on their jackets. And, well, like, I turned for just a second. And it looked like. And you became a pillar of salt. Oh, what? It what? It couldn't have been one of the kids, Lieutenant. It couldn't have. They wouldn't hurt Ann. Come on, stop yodeling now. What is the emblem you think you saw? But I'm not sure. It could have been anything. I don't know. Betty, what do you think you saw? A bulldog, Lieutenant. McGruff? I might have seen a bulldog. Mm -hmm. Ah, very nice. Hey, look. Give me a hot shot, will you? Hey, Marty, how about two burgers? A pair. Coming up, Vicky. One forty plate last night. Man, I can't get them out here. Get it. Fire. 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 Timothy Van Patten's favorite hangout. <laughs> hey, how about one square booth here. Party? Hey, I'm the cop. Sorry, Tony. No credit without we had a chance to check your references. Look, there's a chef appearing Wait, tonight. Check, Marty. Look, it's rotten. Oh, shut up. What, bud? What's that one? Leave my I love life. the atmosphere here. Hey, Marty, it's okay. I'll pay for it. Okay. Sit down, right. Ah, lunch at the Russian Tea Room. Did you already answer the races tonight, Jim? I don't think so, Kirby. I kind of figured you'd shut down. You weren't there last night either. <laughs> I know. But look. It's over, Curly. Either you're going to drag it, or you're going to drop it. Look, why don't you just lay off, Curly? You know what happened last night. So, Marty, what do you oh, want to do tonight? Why? Jerk, Betty almost got killed, too. For the very last time, right? Shut up. Uh, your finger smells like bologna. Look, Curly, why don't you keep your fat? Ooh. Hands off, little man. 
You two bring it up in here. You got anything to settle? Hey, Drew Carey. Settle it hmm. outside. I breathe a little easier knowing the fry cook's on the job. Hey, Gag! Come on, Jack. Come on, hey, it's Heidi. Jimmy, I'm yeah. sorry about last night. Betty okay? I haven't seen her yet, but I guess so. She wasn't in any of her classes today. Good read. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Hey, you, dance! This teen joint brought to you by the Paneling Council. Hey, you ready, Jack? Almost oh, there. that was great. Hey, get off my toast! Citizens! Union! Union! Union. 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 They're dead! Yeah. Those of you who have undying love for the Beatles! Music for 18 Musicians by Stephen Reich! Yeah. The Dead Kennedys! Circle Jerks! Orlando! The Cramps! Yeah. The Buzzcocks! Not to mention the Chad Mitchell Trio! Butthole yeah. Surfers! Yeah. Yeah. I proudly introduce you to Mary and Jack, the Huntington Astronauts! Mm -hmm. You can see the ceiling. Greg Tolan must have photographed yeah. it. Because that's a joke you see in it. Well. Look, you're standing in my biscuits and gravy. But an RCA Victor label. Now I recognize you're a label. Check, please. Ready. Hope these kids have grief counseling. I had a fella who told me that he loved me. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, ye
on a Saturday night during crazy days when all the sidewalk sales were going on, it could seem just like hell town. Wow, what you must have gone through. Well, yeah. look yeah. at the time no, I got. No, 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 no. Nobody's leaving till we figure out what crime has been perpetrated here. Uh, no crime. We were just playing. Yeah. Oh, just playing, huh? Well, that's really funny, Crow, because I knew another little brother who was just playing, and you know what? He bought himself a one-way ticket to the Bone Orchard. Mm. Now, let me take a guess here. Servo, you dissed my little brother, Crow. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Um, diss as in disrespect? Yes. Well, sure, always. <laughs> then you job. dissed me, too. Uh, well, wouldn't Because when you cut that. my compadre, you cut me, and when you cut me, you cut all men everywhere. Huh. How am I getting through to you guys on this, huh? Oh, you've made a deep impression. You certainly hey, have. Hey, 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 guys. Huh? What? Come on, people now. Oh, no, Mike, that's Smile not on your brother, please everybody. Oh, no, please don't. Oh, no, 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 Oh, we got one right. Bless no, the beast. Oh, right. shut your cake hole, Nelson. Lieutenant Anderson from Homicide. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for supporting Live Homicide. Now, most of you know what happened last night. Well, we've reason to believe that someone here might be involved. Someone bring in my presentation. Hey, Jimmy, what's going on? Just don't say anything. Betty was not with me last night, all right? Okay, but I... A young man. Betty wasn't with him last well, night. With me, sir? Yes. You've got something to say. I'd like to hear it. Oh, no. No, no, sir. Uh, oink, oink, sir. I smell bacon. You. You. Me? You. Me? You and you. Me and me? Come here. Wait a minute. Can I have this? We need it for the cast of all. Which jacket is this? What jacket? Ha! <laughs> Even I gotta admit that's pretty funny. All right, now. Somebody here owns this jacket. And that's, that's mine, officer. Yeah, I, I hung it there when I came in. You can't wear black. What's your name? Tony Manis. Mm -hmm. You're, uh, you're sure this is your jacket? Yes, sir. That's right. Now, you uh, and I have never met before, have we? How come the label says Jimmy Walton? Because it's mine, Lieutenant. It's my jacket. He was just trying to cover for me. <laughs> trying to cover up that I kill people. He's a All nut. All right. <laughs> you buy it. Let's take a ride with me. Come on. Ah, oh, jeez. Yipes, stripes, what's the lit? Oh, what the heck does that mean? It's visiting day at the equipment room at Old High School. All right, boys, get in there. Excuse the mess. We kind of live out of our jail. <laughs> All right, Deputy, where's the sheriff? He's gone to the television station to broadcast a warning. OK, tell him I'll let him know if there's anything new. Yes, sir. Say hi to our TV audience. Oh, All right, hold that down in here. Hold it down. Board straight. <laughs> Lieutenant. Interrogation room and showers. <laughs> These pants are really tight. Listen, a girl was murdered last night. Another one half scared out of her wits. If you think this is a comedy, you're crazy. Good, this is funny. You saying you think one of us has something to do with all this? I'm not saying anything. Now sit back and be quiet. And don't wear yellow anymore. I'll be right back. Hmm. Okay, boys, cavity search time. Jeez, now you've ruined it. No more killing all that summer. That really bugged me. Get off it, Curly. Hey, look, we know none of us had anything to do with it. Yeah, but where we dragged last night isn't sanctioned. It's you. Jew? I there? specifically heard him say Jew. So what? I know where I was. You gonna tell him where you were? Yeah, Curly, we could get arrested for dragging. Yeah, man, we're not mess. Cool. I told you we shouldn't have last night. Bullet! The man wants us to fight. Well, you're all to be hanged. Your parents have been called. They're coming after you. Hey, man, we're getting broke. Oh, man, I'd rather stay here and face the old man. Why, you why ought to? Look, Lieutenant, you still haven't told us what this is all about. First, I want to know how many more are in your group. Well, what do you mean, sir? I mean this club you belong to, these jackets. <laughs> what do you call yourselves? That's, that. That's a dumb name. <laughs> the number one group in the state. We control shipping from oh, the inside yeah. out. The fastbacks. Well, how many are there? Just five, man. But we're the best. Quality really? since 1844. Best what? Drag, man. None can touch it. Mm -hmm. Oh, my... Wow, I'm impressed. Are there any more jackets like this? Well, lots of guys at school wear them. But not with a bulldog. 
It's ours, strictly. Knock it off, Curly. <laughs> it's just possible one of you wearing these was seen last night. Seen where? You tell me where. It's a game. Man, I sure hate to face my own man. What about you? Surely not I, Lord. I wasn't with them. Well, where were you then? I was in Austria during the rumble. Uh, my, my dad thought I was in my room, but I snuck out and met my girl. Well, why were you supposed to be in your room? My father found out I joined the fastback, and he grounded me. So you joined this group? Yes, sir. Isn't but I wasn't with him last night. I met I my girl. So, but that still doesn't account for your whereabouts at the time of the murder. Uh, sir, do we get attorneys right, or something? I at the school. I went on home. Did your folks see you? No, sir. I climbed back in through the window. I mean, they didn't even know I was gone, I guess. I'm late. Who's what am I missing? All right. But I want you to remind their parents for releasing these boys in their custody. Yes, sir. Hmm. Eddie Egan. On your feet, boys. Mm -hmm. Man, I think I'd rather be arrested than face my own man. All right, boys. Follow me. Time to introduce you to your new husbands. Wait a minute, Jimmy. Son. You're real pretty. You got troubles. Unless there's something else you want to tell me. There's nothing I can tell you. Well, sometimes I get all, all right. tingly. But I want your promise. No sneaking out, no seeing your girl, and we'll let you go home with your folks. So I'm Gandhi now? Are cops constitutionally able to ground kids? Yeah. And now here's Sheriff Frankel of Cabell County with a special message to ah. our parents. Ah. Parents and teenagers of Cabell County. Here. Last night, a third child was victim of a dastardly crime. Somewhere in this city, a <laughs> madman is preying on teenage girls. I believe the it's me. The police department and your sheriff's office right. are doing their best to stop it. What went away there? We urge you not to try to take the law into your own hands. Cut it out, guys. This is a civilized community. All officers have been directed to arrest anyone found you, you with unlicensed arms or weapons. Cut, we urge cut it you out. stay home. Right. Stay safe. And cable up. Thank you. You have just heard a special announcement brought to you as a public service by Channel 13. We now return to our regularly scheduled programming. Ed Mass and his untouchables busted up Frank Nitty Speakeasy and Cicero. Uh, son, uh, care to dance? Is that you, John? Yes. And I've got Jimmy with me. Just a minute. I'm turning the chair off. I'm coming right down. I'm wearing the French maid outfit. Sam. Avert your eyes, son. Here comes Mother. I just heard the sheriff's warning. It's terrible, John. Yes. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. And our son is involved. Congratulations. Jimmy, you? Mom. Now, young man, you get upstairs and you stay there. Ooh. But, Dad. Don't but dare me. What kind of a son have I got? He won't even give me a chance. <laughs> Your chance. You've got a short memory. Hey, Mom. Uh, Mom, What's that? can I bring some of the kids over? Oh, hi, Jimmy. This afternoon, maybe we can do something. Mikey, get upstairs. Your brother is a killer. Oh, I think we found Waldo. Mm -hmm. What did I do? Get upstairs. You know the rules. How did you get unchained? All right. Now, anybody know him? Now the whole ugly mess will come out again. Hey, don't talk about Mikey that way. I thought by moving to Huntington that I'd spare your mother and I the embarrassment of the neighbors knowing that our son was a thief. Hmm? But no. You had to race hot rods. Yeah. Had to sneak out in the middle of the night. John, maybe... Maybe nothing. Yes, dear, thank you. Now, you listen, and you listen straight. Mm -hmm. You'll stay in your room from now on in. <laughs> I'll drive you to school. I don't know what kind of a mess this is going to turn out to be. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to do. Curse of the starving but class. by Jupiter, you'll stay in your room this time. Oh, don't invoke I'll Jupiter's drive you to man. school. No. Your mother will come and pick you up and then into your room. Now, give me a hug. Now, now get upstairs. And you stay there. Okay. Is this love? And leave Mikey alone. He's working on his novel. I love it when you act like Durfuhrer, honey. Let's commit the marriage act. <clears throat> no? John. Marsha. What are we going to do? I don't know. Let's learn Italian. I've always wanted to learn Italian. I just don't know, June. <laughs> It's me, Jimmy. Can I have Bastrasa and the albums back? Can I come in? No. Please. I want to make you feel better. Dad said no. But I've got Dad my TJ Friday's outfit on. Mom's next door. 
Get their head in the oven. Please let me come talk to you, Jimmy. Will you give me a swirly? Please. All right. But stop your sniffling. Here. The Amish kids beat me up again. What are you gonna do? Rot in this room, I guess. Hmm. I don't know. Jimmy? I am I blooming? I'm sorry. It's not your fault. But Dad's so upset. Mm. Yeah. I guess I can't blame him much. But it's all my fault. Well, only in the sense of original sin. Well, right. We said we'd never talk about it. But I got it, Jimmy. I just got it. It's my fault you're in this mess now. Your fault? You didn't sneak out last night. But you didn't steal that bike. No, and you didn't either. Oh, Jimmy. I should have told him then. I only borrowed it because because you wouldn't let me use yours. Huh. I didn't steal it. Hmm. Honest. I know you didn't. But you didn't either. Birth? Ooh. Why didn't you just tell them? Look, we promised it's over. Push, Jimmy, push. Come on. Let me tell the folks, please. No. Ah. You think it would ah. make any difference now? Look, I'll be all right. Oh, God, he's at 10. Ah. Oh. Let them even more. Just leave it be. Leave me be. Get out of here. Ooh. Mikey's down. Medic. Hey, I'm sorry. Hey, come on. Mikey, huh? I'm sorry. So I sing you to sleep after the love. Look, do you really want to do me a favor? Yes. Here, put this ointment on. Will you take this note to Betty for me? Only don't let anyone see you give it to her. Okay. It's a prescription for Valium. You just deliver this. Okay. I'll take it to her right now. Hey, tell her. Uh, You're really not my brother. Tell her I hope she's okay. All right. And stay away from the riverfront. And no more pretending you're Lord Byron. Whoa. Hey, it's wet here. Oh. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, girlfriend. <laughs> clang, clang, clang went the trolley. Pansy Graham. Uh, Mistress Aisha, I'm here for my beating. Okay, is home Betty? No. Oh, is available but is Betty of the oh, I don't know what the ah. uh, Is Betty home, Miss Royston? It's important, honest. I, I gotta talk to her. Uh, well, I'll see. You wait here. You're safe, I guess. If I could just smell a few cushions, I'd be happy. Don't lick the furniture this Betty? time. Betty? Betty? Yes, mother. There's a young man to see you. I'll be right down. Oh, yeah. You're in. She'll be right down. Wait here, young man. You little freak. I could really confide in her. Will, will you make me some lunch at... Oh. Who is it? Oh. What are you? What do you want? I'm sorry about what happened, Betty. But, but Jimmy didn't do it. Hmm? Jimmy didn't do what? Who said he did? Police. They're saying he did it. He gave me this for you. He was with me. I told him that. Ooh, it's moist. See, and please need this kid in the groin. <laughs> Mikey, tell him I'll sneak out tonight. She's touching me. I'll, I'll meet him at Marty's. Okay, but, but he's not supposed to go out. I'm not supposed to see him either. Just tell him I'll be there. Okay, but... but what about the boom shadow that just crossed behind I'll tell him, Betty. I'll tell him. Yeah. Jeez, what is that smell? Well, that went well, I thought. I reached out to other human beings and I was not slapped down. Mm -hmm. I can chew and dance at the same time. <laughs> I said, let's go outside so I can strangle you. <laughs> Eddie R. Care and Annette Funicello go out on the town. Hi, Tony. Elaine. Hi. Uh, hi, Betty. How you feeling? Oh, okay, I guess. My neck hurts from the strangler. Gee, that's a nice song. It's the only oh, song. Who <laughs> wants to give the play some class? <laughs> oh, shut up. You're no Jerry Paris. Hey, um, can I get you something? Huh? Oh, no, I don't think so. Well, how about I sip my pop? I mean, there's nothing in it. Am I the only drink that can make that statement? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Betty, can we get you anything? Oh, no, thank you, Marty. Betty, how you doing, kid? Oh, my uh, tetanus arm. Trouble. Trent Trouble. Dum, 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 dum. Well, hi, Betty King. How about wrestling this one with me? No, I don't think so. Yeah, that would be strange. I hope you shake your blues. The lady says no. 
You got a real bad memory, Ron. And you're no good at languages. Now, oh, come on. Can someone shut that music off? It's Why driving me crazy. I kind of like it. Ron, I'm going to have to play teacher and learn you a lesson. You'll never forget if you open your mouth just one more time. Now you sit back. Yikes, Stripes. Get the crap kicked out of you. Why don't you let her alone? You know she's Jimmy's girl. Yeah. Well, Jimmy's been grounded, see? He's all cooped up. Ooh. This little bird can still fly. Take it back, please. Oh, you hurt my pant area. Give me a roll. Put them off. Get a banana split. Oh, get the burger. I'm gonna mop your floor. The run here's elected head mop. You'll have hmm? to start with me, Carly. If you think you're big enough. You're not in Pacton anymore. I was only kidding. You and your buddies get out of here and don't come back. You hear? The service stinks anyways. Mm. Carly? You owe me 30 cents for three drinks. Bill me. Where? In the hospital? 30 cents. Cash. No credit. If that's OK with you. Randy Quaid, ladies and gentlemen. You and me still got a mopping date. OK, how's Tuesday? Out. Looks good. How's that? Just keep, oh, OK. Oh. Well, I was really going to get him if he hadn't slammed me against the wall. That really broke my momentum. <laughs> Uh, Gary, I broke up with you while you were over there getting trashed. The hell? Peter Weller's back in town. Hey, hi, Jimmy. <laughs> Sit down, Jimmy. I'll see you kids later. What, what happened to you? Oh, nothing. Curly, he got fresh with Betty. Oh, it was nothing. Ma Mari threw him out. Slammed against the wall again, huh? Look, do you two mind? I know. Sure, we, we know. Three's a crowd. Is a jam. <laughs> He's you still got a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> mm. Okay, I got the stuff. He's really a nice guy. I can be a nice guy. So are you, Jimmy. Oh, what are we going to do? Nothing. Just like what we've been doing the whole movie. I mean, I've got to leave Huntington. But why? You didn't do anything. I know, but they think I did. I've got my stuff packed. Where are you going? I don't know. I'll get a job somewhere. I'll write you. Jimmy, please. Come to terms with your sexuality. You know, if my folks found out that I was with you tonight, I'd never get out again. But I just had to see you. Me too. I just had to tell you that... Tell me what? You make me feel oh, look, funny. I know things are a mess now, but someday they'll straighten out. I'll come back. I mean... Will you wait for me? Oh, you know I will. But running away isn't going to help. What am I going to do? Jimmy. Have the Texas I toast. If you love me, I don't know what I'd do. Hmm? Me too, honey. Yeah. I got in trouble once before. It wasn't my fault, but now it looks like they blame me for these things. And the Hindenburg disaster. No, it wasn't me you saw that night. No, I just saw the jacket. Oh, I don't know what I saw. Are you two gonna order or what? Let me take you home. I gotta think. Maybe if I walk or something. God bless America. Some people might not realize that it was basically an offensive maneuver to let him slam me into the wall. Oh, that's not your house. I'm a little disoriented after the fight. Hmm. So, do you uh, got a water bed? Well, that's really safe. That's yeah, the first place they look. Yeah, I thought you said your folks would be home. Well, it's a little earlier than I thought. Don't worry, I'll be all right. You want me to walk you home? No. Well, maybe. Hey, uh, you want me to come in? <laughs> you can flip any chick in the house. Why me? Good night, Tony. Ooh. Oof. It, it was the slam against the wall thing, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, by the way, we're just friends, okay? Bye. Well, home at... Wait a minute. He dropped me off at the wrong house. Good night, Tony. Well, my ride's here anyway. I couldn't have kissed her anyway. Nah, she won't be strangled tonight. Hmm, tumbler of VO, fistful of yellows, and I'll be set for the night. Mm. 
Mm. Mom, no! Get back in there! What have we told you? Let's see if King Biscuit's on. She's turned on the all yipe stripe station. <laughs> Ooh. Mm, that apple lady is really doing the trick. <laughs> It's Gypsy Rose Lee and the Ventures teaming up for the naughtiest teen scene ever. Wow. <laughs> oh, she sure makes that plaid look tasty, though, doesn't she? She gets pretty good sound from that radio. It's great. Now, this is when strangling was more convenient. Strangler mm. came right to your house. Mm. In 30 minutes. <laughs> Watchtower. <laughs> It's that nutty Jack Tripper again. Nice set of calves, huh? Oh, boy. <laughs> Mama. Well, I certainly hope there's some applique or some non-skid surface in that tub, for safety's sake. Mm -hmm. Well, let me guess. Uh, no, I'll just change it to classical. I can't work with this rock music. Hey, Mom, is that you? Yes, it is. Oh, steamy, sexy. Abraham Lincoln? Hmm. Oh, it's Andrew Dice Clay, of course. <laughs> Jack and Jill went up there. Mother? Mother? It's my turn for the shower. You're not fully dead until you're zestfully dead. What the? It's a convertible cop car with a siren. Solar eclipses. Close to half. Oh my toe. Oh. Ow, oh, my shin. Oh. No, they're down the street visiting neighbors. Well, is Jimmy in his room? Yes, Jimmy's upstairs. He's confined to his room. Well, would you, uh, would you get him, please? I'm Here's Michael you. Anthony. Thank you. Uh, I'm a neighbor of theirs. What's the trouble? There's been another murder. Oh no. It wasn't me who was murdered, was it? Meanwhile, Teen Boy steps into action. Teen will be away. Teen Boy is filmed in Blue Vision. Well, he looks like a probable suspect. I'm going to apprehend him. <laughs> More people should use their turn signals. Mm -hmm. A daring chase scene well within the confines of the law. Damn you, Duke boys! <laughs> Maybe I should take down his license plate number and call it in or something. See the incredible school zone action. Hmm. Okay, come on, come on. Come on. Put in here. Come on. <laughs> so they stopped at Henry David Thoreau's cottage. Teen boy, there's trouble on the other side of town. <laughs> been working out. You feel pretty good. All right, get the key. Could you frisk me again, please? I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I got scared. Son, you scared a lot of us. Mm. Come on, let's go. This time I'll drive. Scaring a lot of us is a felony, son. Oh, baby. Mm. Can't I sit in the front? Makes me feel like you're my chauffeur or something. Oh, mama. Mm hmm. Airport, make it snappy. I'm just kidding, sir. Well, you got the red chair on my cow, baby. This movie has a really gritty street feeling to it, doesn't it? Ooh. It's urban. Hey, uh, you want to stop for some Mexiskins? Later at Cal Berkeley. Free Huey. Off the pigs. <laughs> Those go cow days. Come here, you little prodigy. I'll give you your Mensa hat. <laughs> oh, look, that janitor is into the grunge look. Hey, Mr. Wilson, what do you think about what happened last night? I think it's good. I think it's terrible. Oh. You kids ought to have better sense. Go about your business. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. You really clean up on your job. Jimmy didn't do anything. I know it. Sure. 
Just wanted to go for a joyride. Kids nowadays. They're hula hoops and ice cream sodas. Pah. Kids is all. Just kids. What an insightful janitor, huh? Angels, I want you to go undercover as tennis players. Wow, that was good pot, wasn't it? Mikey, what are you doing here? Penny, I gotta talk to you. Sure. I just gotta. I think I'm a hermit for that. You gotta help him. You gotta. Who? What are you talking about? You mean you don't know about Jimmy? <laughs> what about Jimmy? He's my brother. He got arrested last night because he wasn't home. Another girl got killed, and, and he wasn't home, so they arrested him. I know he went home. He promised me. I know, but, but the police came just as he... Well, he got scared and drove, drove off in Dad's car. Don't hit me. When they caught him... He said he couldn't tell where he was. He just couldn't. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He was with me. I know, but he won't tell them. Oh, it's all my fault. Yep. I told him I'd get into trouble. Mm -hmm. Betty, what are we going to do? We can't let him get blamed. What are we going to do? Rub your face in crunchy underwear? There's only Ooh. one thing we can Well, I'm sorry. I... Come on. I need some chocolate. Oh, Betty, I could be beat up in so many ways here. <laughs> Hey, weren't we gonna beat the crap out of him? Yeah, it's next time. It's implied. Okay. Yes, Captain. We did search this yeah, we caught him. But he won't say anything, just that he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And he won't tell us where he was. Yes, we gave him a swirly. Well, he says he ran off because he was scared. And, Captain, you know something? You're fired. I kind of believe him. I don't know why, but, but something's wrong. So what's the other important information you wanted to talk about? Lieutenant, there's a couple of kids out here to see you. Yeah, they're okay. waiting in my neck flap. Yes, An unlikely Betty? couple. Mm -hmm. Son, come on in. Come on, Betty. <laughs> We're very upset about the school lunch program. Lieutenant Anderson. That's me. <laughs> he didn't do it. He didn't do it. He was with me last night. <laughs> these two off. Beautiful scene. Just oh, that's a great scene. <laughs> so here's the plan. Okay. Mike walks into the room. Plausible. Puts on those glasses. Okay. And thanks to a tiny electrode that scrambles his left brain function, he becomes goofy doofy, wimpy Mikey from the movie. <laughs> God, I love technology. Oh, mama. Oh, let me oh, tell you. Here he comes. Hi, guys. Hey, you mind if I join you? Oh, hey, no problem, Mike. Always room for the big blonde human. That's me. <laughs> yep. Uh -huh, yeah, in fact, uh, Mike, we were wondering if you'd look something up in that there dictionary right for us. Right there, this dictionary yeah, there. Sure. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, that print is small. How do you... Oh, well, you could use those glasses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right there. All right. Oh. Hey, what's with the cord? Uh, um, th th they're digital. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Digital. 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 Well, what did you want me to look up? Uh, how about rhyme? Rhyme? Yeah. R-I-M-E. <laughs> it's a homonym for the other word rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy. Mom's so upset. <laughs> Jimmy, you gotta come back, Jimmy. <sighs> so, rhyme, does that help? Uh, Mike, you didn't finish. Yeah. Right. I didn't. Rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> Rhyme, <laughs> an accumulation of granular ice, and I didn't steal the bike neither. It was all me. I did it. It was my fault. Please, Betty. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, hmm. so that's rhyme, uh, which is a homonym for the other word rhyme. Well, you, know, you know, I think you would look good in black glasses, bro. No, 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 no. Yeah, you would look good. You take, hey, let's go clean your head. I, I don't need it. Okay, I can hold it together. Jimmy? No, I'm me. The, the, the sheriff wanted to see you right now, Jimmy. I'll take that letter to Jimmy. No, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Uh, I didn't ask for no commercial sign either. Uh, uh,
incredible sexless girl man tells all in Crying Jack. Oh, I'm a teenage strangling man. Oh, no. <laughs> you have to take the glasses off. What are you doing? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Honey, I want you to be Mikey all day. Thank you. Jules and Jim. Well, <laughs> if it ain't the little hero. Hmm? Here you gave him quite a chance. Jonathan though. Silverman. They never would have caught me. Maybe it's better this way. The offer still goes, baby. Hmm? Want to drop slowpoke here? My chariot is gas and ready. English, please. Why don't you just hop in and get on out of here then? And <laughs> take this with you. <laughs> Ooh, and thus the haberdasher turf war began. Is this a good time to mention there's a strangler loose? <laughs> Boing! <laughs> yeah, they're they're tough, aren't they? This is the goofiest fight. I am not a cook. <laughs> Just another day on the Beverly Hills 90210 set. <laughs> this is gonna happen when you serve tuna wiggle for lunch. Yep. Now sprinkle sawdust in all of you. Oh, no. <laughs> Man, I'll take you on any other way, too. Yeah, well, I get my kids some speed if you get the nerve. I got it. Looks like Operation Rescue. Oh, big, but you don't pull up. I'll outrun you just like before. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I love you tomorrow. Oh, that was too easy, Tom. <laughs> I agree. Wish I'd said it. <laughs> now, hogs all around. Come on. Well, uh, by the way, can I borrow your econ you notes? You yeah, maybe you ought to listen to Mama, Jimmy. Tomorrow at the strip. <laughs> Come on. Manana, buddy. What's this bread album have I to do with it? I don't that? know. Look, well, Katie Lang is in their group. Oh. Next time we'll debate him, right? Mm. I don't like this, Jimmy. Jimmy, why do you have to prove yourself? Because I'm short. I got a betty. Like, I guess I asked for it. I can't back down now. Hmm. Hey, what he says, go to Marty's. I'll buy a pop, huh? Pop, that's your answer to everything. Hey, Jimmy. Yes, Tony? Hey, don't you want your jacket? No. Nope. Not anymore. It's mid-July. Mm. So, well, here you go, director. <laughs> You're fun to study with, Gary. Next time on Sweating Bullets, crime time after prime time. <laughs> The Mahavishnu Orchestra. Excuse me, can I have a word with you? Oh, Henry, please, not every time I come home. Serial killing is easy once you get the hang of it. I'm Marshall Brody. Hmm. Hmm? They killed Vivian Vance. Oh. Every man's mom, dead. Now they're behind you. I have that problem. <laughs> Suddenly it's daddy -o. <laughs> I'm trying to get the Danny Thomas silhouette just right. Come in, come in, come in. Ricky, sit, sit, stay, stay, sit. Come in, come in. Sit, stay, stay. We'll meet you at the other end. You make it. We'll see. How does that make you feel? Hunter Thompson. Whoopee! <laughs> and uh, <laughs> 25 miles an hour to death. They like to look at the scenery as they drag race. Ooh, real pretty. Oh, yeah. Jimmy pops the clutch and politely asks the world, would you mind eating my dust so much? As a matter of fact, I do on the road. <laughs> hey, Yoo-Hoo, your blinker's on. Your blink. Oh. In a few years, this whole area all built up. Oh, it's a shame, huh? Mm. Hey, what's say about a picnic? Corn job. <laughs> I see, I see, I see. Jimmy! Jimmy, stop! I gotta talk to you. I haven't sold enough grit. <laughs> Look out, that's razor wire! <laughs> I think I'm barren now or something. Mike, are you okay? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Is your hair on okay? Are you all right? 
Sure, Jimmy. <laughs> I beat myself up. I'm all right. Ma, he hardly missed me. Mom says to call attendant Anderson. Right away. It's important, Jimmy. You right gotta away. go home and empty the dishwasher, Jimmy. Will you stay with him. Sure. I'll get to you later, Curly. Okay. Stay with him, honey. Come on. Come on, there's a sale at Laura Ashley. Come on. A phone? What a convenient drag race. The call is coming from me. No, operator, I'd like the police department, please. Any police department will do. Yes, this is Jimmy Walton. Could I speak with Lieutenant Anderson, please? Thank you. Why doesn't Jimmy Walton call? Maybe that's you. <laughs> well, the FBI didn't have many files back then. Yellow. Lieutenant Anderson. Hello, Lieutenant. This is Jimmy. Oh, hi. Yes, Jimmy. Now, listen carefully. I want you to get to the rest of the fastbacks and have them come to my office on the double. Never mind. We found one of your emblems, and I want all of you in my office immediately. Hmm. That's right. His office is in the boys' bathroom. <laughs> so, who won the drag race, guys? Uh, guys! Hey, Chuck, see if you can get the guys back here. Us? Huh? Are you Chuck? Me? And action! <laughs> Well, anyway, it's more my pride that got hurt. At least my shirt's okay. Quitting already? Look, we're all going down to Lieutenant Anderson's right now. It'll be fun. Turn it back out. I told him we'd all be there. Hmm. Yeah, well, you don't promise no cop nothing. <laughs> don't be a fool. They found something. Jane Houston was strangled last night. Uh, she was strangled last Fine. week. Hey, Curly, where's your emblem? Um, my mom's washing it. In my locker. Why? Because that's what they found near Jane Houston. Oh. It's in my locker. Mm. Come out this morning. Mm -hmm. Now look. Nobody's gonna send this stuff to me. <laughs> You're going with us for Lieutenant Anderson. I think I hear my mom calling. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, an able bodied assist for Mikey. <laughs> Michael, I shut the door for you. Bye bye now. Bye. bye kids. Safe home. Bye bye. <laughs> Nice kids, huh? Hmm. No, don't you dare go through that. Don't you go through that yard. Oh, you... It's the battle of the network sedans. <laughs> it's Junior Car Rodeo with old-timer Billy Slater. You hmm? can't squeal in dirt. It's impossible. Maybe Hal Needham was brought in to direct the sedans. Stop that! Really? Uh, uh, it's a big pass for the rodeo clowns. <laughs> Wait. They're driving at speeds approaching the actual speed limit. Mm. Hmm. Mikey, would you please move over? The other way, Mikey. Well, at least it's a nice day for it. Mm. Mm -hmm. What the? How can he be on that side? Well, now the cameraman fell over. <laughs> he crashed, <laughs> then shot himself. <laughs> I could learn a lot from a dummy. They have to play the Horace Silver for his accident. I got his jacket. You know what we have to do? Yeah. We gotta pants him. Yep. Honest. It's in my lock locker. Looks like they're in Vietnam all of a sudden. Yeah. Maybe it is. Gosh, what have we done? It couldn't be. Betty, check his locker. Okay. Tony, call Lieutenant Anderson. Yeah, right. Uh, Curly, we'll be with you shortly. Uh, please stand by. I'm taking your car. I have your checkbook. And put some gas in it, too. And go backwards all the way. Oh, no, Mr. B. Natural's in one of those lockers. Oh. Oops. <laughs> Friend is dying. They have a very small student body. 
Trying to make it real compared to what? Oh, oh, Mr. Wilson, you frightened me. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm trying to find something. Or not find it. Or something. What are you mumbling about? I have to check Curly's locker. Oh, he my said dear. he left something in there. Oh, Mr. Wilson, it's terrible. Well, now we'd better open the locker. Yes. Have a master key. We call it a master key because it opens every door. One of your basic janitor tools. It's actually quite a bit of responsibility. <laughs> You've been eating SpaghettiOs? Oh, my gosh. What is it? My art project. The emblem. It was in his locker. Child, I don't have a notion of what you're talking about. I found the emblem. Oh, Jimmy might have killed him. Oh, Mr. Wilson. Now, child, just calm down. Uh -oh. Come, we'll go into my office room and I'll fix you a cup of tea. Oh, what are we going to do? Just mm. calm down. <laughs> well, why don't I just strangle myself then? <laughs> I actually prefer the term custodian. After all, I like to think of myself as a concierge for the students. Oh, here's where I uh, stare at the cheerleaders right in here. Now, you sit. I'll strangle. Mm, while I'm fixing us some tea, you tell me just what it was you found. Um, do you have chamomile? <laughs> Who got hurt? Uh, Jimmy. Oh, I mean, Curly. Uh, you see, the emblem on his jacket was missing, and they found one by Jane Houston, and we thought that hmm? he didn't. He didn't do it. I know he didn't do it, Mr. Wilson. Oh, I'm babbling. I'd know. I did. What the? Mr. Wilson. You know you can't wear pink. Oh, he uh, ran with Malcolm Forbes. Oh, oh yeah. cool. Lady, it's time to get on the clue bus. I found the jacket, child. The emblem was already off. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, how about that tea? Is it? But when he threw it away, it wasn't. Get back to us when you have a whole sentence worked out. Mr. Wilson, I want to go home. Please. No. The master wants Please. you, but he can't have you. I want to go home just yet. Cream or sugar in your tea. Please, Mr. Wilson. Oh, you're saying please, Mr. Mm. Wilson. Yes, all of a sudden, it's please, Mr. Wilson. Your bunch doesn't usually say please. The Miss Manners murders. Oh, Mr. Wilson won't please. But why? 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 Hmm? It was a student just like you years ago. She said... Well, something or other, I don't know. I used to be a teacher then. Then I rolled the lawnmower. She said I tried to touch her. Like this? I wasn't even near. But the school board wouldn't listen. Ooh. Now look where I am. Mr. Wilson, the janitor. Do you think I like it? Yes, you no. Think I like cleaning up after a bunch of grubby kids like you. Oh, I hate you. You have lovely eyes, oh, though. Thank you. Everyone. You see a guidance counselor. But the jacket I saw that first time. I'm glad you asked that question. This one. I forgot about the paint smear. I tried scrubbing it out. <laughs> but in the dark, it might have looked like a bulldog. Or a park bench. And that gave me the idea. <laughs> they might have thought it was one of you, but no, you had to... Don't. Fortunately, the Higgins boys and Gruber were on the scene. Pete, Link, uh, Tony. Hey, look what the janitor is doing. Hey. Da ah! Ah! Don't. The whole cattle is whistling. I, I need control top. <laughs> now what the hell? I'll just shoot in here for times. Hmm? Well, Hoppa. Well, he's union, so they won't be able to fire him. Mm. The Lysol's in the... Oh. Punch me out, please. <clears throat> oh, can you believe it? Strangled with sandal toes. <gasps> Ironically, there's no one there to clean him up. He did it. He was crazy. He killed all those girls. It's over, honey. It's over. It's all over now. Congratulations, it's over. Tell her what she's won, Johnny. My dummy.
Thank goodness you boys had the good sense to call. By the way, what were you doing in that scene? Well, that oh, was fun. That movie uh, was yeah, good. Good. Oh, no. It's an epilogue. Out of the hospital today. Yeah. It's our fault, isn't it? I don't know what to say to him. <laughs> hey, look, Lieutenant Anderson. And he's wearing pants. Got a friend of yours with me. What? Marty? All what? right. Okay. Sure. Bring him in. Maybe it's Jesus. Ooh, probably not. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Oh. Uh, I got pudding in the big white place. <laughs> Kind of embarrassing, really. Mikey beat me up. <laughs> this one's on the house. Thank you. Hey, gang, look who's giving credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. I don't either. Just for him and just today. Oh. It's great how a serial killer can bring a town together, huh? I'll set him up for everybody. <laughs> you just stay out of the shop. Please. And I'll dance. Later. Dancing what? The dancing? <laughs> dancing. <laughs> this must be the Yikes Stripes housemates. Looks like he took dance lessons from Arch Hall Jr. <laughs> of Ega fame. Stimlo. Bad! Oh, I hate this. <laughs> you bring me food? Bud, Bud Williamson. <laughs> Cheek. I don't like this song. Tequila. Oh, Danny Dean and the Daredevils. I hope they died knowing nobody loved them. <laughs> they did. I can't take my eyes off of the... <laughs> No, Mikey ended up in Andy Warhol's factory. I'm the new janitor now. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought the Strangler was going to be a teenager, hence the title Teenage Strangler. Yeah, but he wasn't. Uh, he didn't exactly strangle teenagers because that one lady was older. That's so right. why and the what? title Teenage Strangler? Well, that exactly well, is my point. Maybe it's not so romantical ones, to but... Gonna be the best Thanksgiving break ever. Oh, you yeah. betcha! I can't wait to get home. Oh, bye, bye, Mr. Schlotsky. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, kids. The bell has rung. School is out. The kids have all gone home. All I do is sweep and pout. I'm left here all alone. I make sure the hallways are gleaming. I keep all the garbage at bay, but inside my heart will be screaming, how did I end up this way? I'm a janitor, a janitor. I clean up the puke at your school. A large fistful of sawdust is my essential tool. I'm a janitor. A janitor, I start work early each morn. I have a drinking problem and a large collection of porn. I'm a janitor, a janitor. I'm looked on as kind of a leech, but at least I get more respect than the ones who have to teach. He's a janitor, a janitor. Please don't sell him short. If you get him too mad, I'll show you my disgusting wart. Yeah. He's, He's a janitor, a janitor. A janitor. A janitor. You got a problem with he that? needs to be loved and respected. He once dated Josephine the plumber. And guess what? Yeah, I was rejected. Oh, he's, he's a janitor. A janitor. A janitor. Yeah, I'm a janitor. We both think he's pretty keen. I hope you liked our presentation. Now back to deep. Play.
Good one, Mike. Frank was swaying to your little song there and got sick. How sick? That's your dinner for the next three weeks, Frank. Didn't steal no bike neither. I did. <laughs> <laughs>